This is the Wisconsin Lighting Lab Willcast. My name is Adam Rupp, and my guest today is Jeff with Crescent Electric out of Racine. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. How are the roads coming up? They too weren't bad. too bad, yeah. It All right. Just wet, mainly. Yeah, so. well, it is, it is winter and it is Wisconsin, that's so right. I guess that's to be expected. But, yeah. Jeff, it's, it's uh, great to have you. Um, you have, I think, a unique perspective on the lighting industry. Uh, you kind of, I know you came into the industry on the tail end of HID, saw the transition LED and the LED boom, uh, and have worked in a you know variety of roles, both at factories and uh, and now in distribution. But mm-hmm. why don't you get into a few details about uh, you know more specifics to your background and what you're doing now? Yeah. So um, after college, I started with a company called Rude Lighting. Um, so they made some LED fixtures, but they made a lot of fluorescent, a lot of HID stuff. Um, started there in a electronic technician capacity. Um, so I was you know fixing assembly lines as they broke and went down. Um, after a while, that kind of grew into an uh, engineering role where I was designing stuff, uh, test equipment for fixtures and whatnot. Um, and then from there, you know, I kind of understood how everything worked electronically and um, wanted to get a more practical idea of how the fixtures work. So that kind of grew into an application engineering role where I was doing lighting layouts and design work. And then from there, um, one of my friends that I, I worked with, he uh, kind of told me, pulled me aside and said, hey, you know, you should go into sales. And I said, well, no, I went to school for engineering. I'm an engineer. I, you know, I'm good. Thanks. He uh, kind of convinced me and went that direction. And it was uh, a really good thing for me. I'm really uh, happy I did that. Um, so I eventually had a three state territory uh, with Cree at that point because Cree bought Rude Lighting and it went really well. Um, and at that time, I was selling everything through Crescent Electric. So, you know, now I work for Crescent. Um, so it was kind of a, it was a good, I guess, transition because I already knew the Crescent industry. I knew how they worked, and I knew a lot of people in the industry. So it's so, been nice. So what was that like in the in the early days when Cree, the publicly traded company, bought the privately held kind of small, medium sized company? Yeah. Um, was it was it kind of fun to have maybe a little bit bigger budget and being able to play around some new designs? Or what did your role look like specifically sure. during that transit? Because sure. that was 2012. I believe. Yeah, right it was around. right around okay. there. Yeah. Um, so at that time, uh, my group, uh, like I said, we were designing, you know, various things to help aid production. Um, and at the time we were told, hey, we need you to build a, a new line to manufacture what was then the CR Troffer. And, you know, we kind of heard some rumblings about, you know, potentially being a, you know, a merger, so you call it with Cree. And sure. so we said, okay. So, you know, we got together and we, we designed this thing, spent, you know, long long days 12 hour days 13 hour days seven days a week getting this thing done because it had to be done by a by a due date um so then after that you know we got that done that's when we got the word that okay you know now cree is going to buy rude lighting and everyone here is going to be cree employees so that you know as you can imagine when something big like that happens (laughs) there's there's good things and bad things from my perspective uh it was all good um you know i've always liked working for larger companies and It just, uh, for me, it worked out really well in my favor. Um, You know, other people had different opinions, obviously. Sure, always mixed opinions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it it was good, though. It was good. Cool. And you, I know you have a lighting design background as Mm -hmm. well. So you were supporting production assembly, um, you know, prototyping, that side of things. Was the lighting design component kind of that interim period between the hands-on engineering and sales? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I did that, and I supported, uh, you know, a number of different distributors um, with, you know, what I did. Um, so Granger was one of them. I did a lot of work with Granger at the time, um, and then I did a lot of automotive-related stuff as well. Um, so it was, you know, really, that's kind of what drove me, I guess, more towards the lighting industry. You know, what I was doing downstairs didn't, it had to do with lighting, but it was yeah. more so, you know, uh, automation type sure. type deal. Um, So that's really when I kind of realized that this is really, you know, what I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, you know, I think transferred really well to when I was doing sales, too, because, you know, I was kind of a one-stop shop. I could do everything from, you know, the layout, the design to the pricing and and so on and so forth. So I think that really helped me be successful. And one of the things that I've I've noticed, uh, you know, being in the industry for about a decade now is you can just tell when somebody's a lighting geek <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and that's, that's often a good thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it, it, on the, on the customer side, when, when people really put the, 
the products first and make the products the hero, um, you know, a lot of the other stuff just becomes less important. And ultimately, you know, giving customers the right solution for the job yep. and something that's high quality, if that's your main interest and your main focus, I think it's good for everybody. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would tend to agree with that. You know, it, it was kind of, I was thinking about it a while back and, you know, salesmen kind of have a bad, you know, stigma yeah. surrounding them. And Oh, come you on, know, I've, I've never heard that yeah, before. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, so when I first got into sales, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, I want to, I want to be different. You know, yeah. I don't want to be the guy that, that tries to fit a square peg in a round hole Absolutely. just to make it work. Yep. Um, you know, so the biggest thing I think is you just got to be truthful with people. You have to tell them if what they want to do is not going to work, you have to tell them that. Yeah. And you have to explain why. Yep. Um, and then at the same time, you know, if, if you don't have a solution for it, but you know, you know, maybe someone else does share that information with them. And I think so. also the thing I've noticed too, uh, is taking a little bit more of a medium to long term view on a relationship ship or on an account. Yeah. If people that are trying to close a certain order that day and then move on to the next customer, the next account, you really aren't invested enough to really care about doing it well. Correct. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't, uh, you know, can't hustle to, um, to service the customer and, and, and that type of thing. But, you know, just knowing that, hey, if, if the relationship doesn't work now, if we keep doing the right thing, keep supporting the right products, you know, if the solution is, is the hero, the product's the hero, eventually it's, it's going to work out. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I think that's in a, lot of, in a lot of cases with sales, um, you know, people that are all, always chasing, always chasing, it, it makes it difficult to really you know, develop those roots with the customer. Yeah, and it does. Um, yeah, you know, in my role right now, so when I was at Cree, I was, you know, a, a new business developer was my role. Um, but, you know, an account manager as well, because I had the, the Crescent account yep. that I was managing. Um, so now I have, you know, like 40 accounts that I work with. So, you know, it's, it's similar, but different. Is, um, is that a lot or is that a little, or is that kind of the average with kind of your, your I, I your would peers? say it's, it's kind of the average, the average. you know, some okay. of the guys that have been there a lot longer, they yep. have fewer accounts, but they're doing more with those, yep. you know, fewer accounts. So, yep. you know, where I'm at, uh, in my career with Crescent, I think that's probably a, a good number because you, you do have to feel out, you know, who's going to be a good fit for you and who's not. And Absolutely. Accounts move around all the time because some people fit better with other people. Sure. Um, but, you know, my, my time at Cree, if, if it taught me anything, it was that, you know, you really got to be there for those people. You say you're going to do something, you have to do it. You have to do it quicker than what you say you're going to do it. And if you do those things, your, your accounts are going to want to stay with you. They're going to like you. Yep. And that's really the main thing because they have a choice of working with, you know, five, six, seven different distributors. If they're coming to you, they're coming to you because they, they like their account manager. It doesn't necessarily always have to do with the business, although it, it, it does help that Crescent is such a good good company. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I, I'm sure there's something to that local face-to-face -face sales. There is. It's yeah. a little bit easier to, you know, perhaps over-promise in some cases when you're, you know, more removed from the customer. But if there's a contractor or, a, you know, an end-user account that isn't happy with a product or service, they know where to drive to. Right? Correct. And, yep. uh, yeah, it probably makes it even more important to get it right. It's true. Yep, that's true. So Crescent, um, so Crescent is a, is a large electrical distributor. Correct. Uh, and it, it's funny, we work with, uh, you know, a number of different distributors, um, you know, as customers and while they're, they're, title in the industry might be electrical distribution there's a lot of different ways that people do things mm -hmm. you know some might be more lighting focused some might be more electrical focused sure um, some might focus on stock and flow business where they want to have you know simple luminaire parts or you know, part numbers in stock for contractor pickup um, you know some might be more project management focused where do you think uh, you know crescents you know focuses maybe within southeastern wisconsin or as a as a company uh, company wide you know I'd say we're pretty diverse um, you know we don't like to have all our eggs in one basket um, so we have you know kind of all those things you just said we kind of do a little bit sure. of all of those um, we just built a new facility in Racine uh, which awesome. I'm out of which is I mean it's been a, a game changer for sure um, you know we went from a real little building to our new buildings 135,000 square feet um, and then about 45,000 of that right now we're actually utilizing uh, so that's you know warehouse office space primarily warehouse though. okay so, you know, all our wire cutting operations are now out of there. Um, we're able to stock product that we couldn't stock before. So, you know, right now, uh, for the most part, anything a customer needs coming through the door, we have in wow. stock for them. So that's really, really been a game changer. Where, it's really helped. Where does the stock lighting fit within that? Is there you have completed fixtures ready for yes. pickup as well? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we have, uh, you know, select SKUs of completed fixtures in stock for our customers. 
um, you know, if it's anything spec or, or anything like that, typically that stuff does have to be ordered, but sure. you know, the, the normal day to day, I guess, stuff that everyone's coming in and asking for, Hey, you know, we need one of these, we need two of these, we have it. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Make so, it easy, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So as a, as a factory, how can we do a, a way above average job of supporting electrical distribution? You know, from my perspective, anyway, the, the two most important things to us are competitive price and a lead time. And when I say lead time, it doesn't necessarily always mean being the, the shortest lead time. It means being true. When you say, hey, we're six weeks out on this. OK, that's fine. I'm going to tell my customer that it has to be here in six weeks, though, because they're going to have boots on the ground. They're going to be ready to install it. And if you're late, then my customer is not happy, yeah, which the, means they're not happy with me, which then in turn means I'm not happy with you. <laughs> yeah, the, the downstream so, ripple effect correct, of that gets, correct, gets, so, gets crazy. You know, the, yeah. the old saying, you know, over promise or yeah, under promise over deliver, yep. um, that I would say is the biggest thing. Okay. Communication. Yeah. So no, that, um, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, as, as, uh, you know, Crescent has so many value added services for their contractors. You guys have the lighting design services you yep. have you know, other design services, you know, the things that aren't always the easiest to control for distributors probably are the factory's lead time and the factory's price. Yep. So if those two bo boxes can be checked as well, it kind of makes it a one-stop shop. Yep. Yep. And I mean, things happen, you know, we yeah. get that, but yep. you know, if you can communicate to us early as possible, when you find out that's, that's key. So okay. communication. So when you think back over the last decade or so, uh, in your, as your, your accounts have changed, they've gone from, you know, OEMs and distributors and people that are closer to kind of the production of the product. Now it's contractors, general contractors, I'm sure some, you know, some end users as mm -hmm. well. How do the, what expectations, how do the, how does that change the closer you get to the contractor, to the end user? What are OEM customers and distribution customers looking for, you know, versus, um, you know, perhaps contractors? You know, I was thinking about that uh, the other day too, and you know it's really not a whole lot different. You know those yeah. same core values still you know play there. Yep. So making sure that you know you're doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Yep. Um, you know that really hasn't changed a whole lot, really, to be honest with you. You know, it's you're. I think you're 100 percent right. And uh, you know, I what I tell our engineering production team um, a lot is you know there's three main things to focus on: hit the spec, hit the quality. Uh, metric and hit the lead time yep. and, and repeat. Correct. And there's the cost component of that in there. Um, and, you know, it's it gets a little bit noisy when you start to overthink it, but you're right. Regardless of the account type from OEM all the way to end user, there's probably three things that people really want and yep. everything else is just details. Exactly. So that's a, that's, a, that's a great perspective. So lighting industry trends. You know, there's some things that have happened the last few years, whether it's tariff related mm -hmm. or you know, could be companies entering and exiting the space or large mergers, that type of thing. Um, do you guys focus on that or you just see a lot of other things to focus on in the day-to-day -day that, that is more important or, you know, how, how important are some of the trends that are happening right now in the industry? Yeah, you know, I think all of that really does affect us. Sure. Um, you know, the, the tariffs and whatnot that obviously did, you know, pricing went up. And yeah. so, you know, with that, I think people kind of understand it. So it's not, you know, anything that's, that's really precluding us from doing any business, but you know, you do have to explain it to your customers and, you know, let them understand that, Hey, you know, the price you got 90 days ago, it's not the same price anymore. <laughs> you yeah. know? So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, all of that stuff, you know, does play a part into the day-to-day -day business, but as long as, again, you're communicating yeah. all of that with your customers, you're, you're good. So there's some major development happening in your part of Wisconsin right now. There is, yeah. Is, I'm sure that's an exciting thing for, for Crescent. It is, yeah. Yeah, so Foxconn is down in Racine. Um, there's another large project that's going to be happening next year. But, you know, those things, you know, a lot of people tend to focus on that. But really, there's a lot of, you know, other business that's yeah. stemming from that, supporting businesses yep. and, you know, infrastructure, new roads, new, new everything. So, you know, it's booming right now down there. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, in my opinion, that's probably one of the reasons they decide to put a new facility in Racine is to handle all that business. Um, and it's been a good thing. You know, we've gotten, you know, we've gotten some chunks of that, that big Foxconn business already. And, you know, I think, uh, it's only going to continue to get better from here. So, cool. Yeah. Well, a couple, a couple kind of rapid fire questions, mm -hmm. uh, to, to end things here. 
Um, you don't have to answer these, but sure. uh, I'll, I'll ask anyway. But um, So your favorite lighting design software? Uh, AGI 32. Um, maybe a market that you think is uh, undervalued that um, you're surprised more people don't get into within the lighting space? You know, that one I would have to take some time and think about. You know, I I guess the things for me, you know, I like factories. I like designing factories, yeah. um, warehousing, automotive lots. Uh, I, I like cars a lot, so I just, <laughs> I like doing automotive work. <laughs> well, we can show you some cool cars yeah, after, after yeah. we're done here. Um, but, you know, I really think... Uh, I would have to take some time and think about that one. I, so when you, when you responded there, it's almost like you know treating the entire building project as as a product right. rather than going in and saying, "Here's one, you know, here's a, a 200 watt replacement for this HID wattage." Like think of the whole thing as you know the electrical design, the lighting design, the the ultimate LED fixture. That's kind of the it's it's maybe more of a solution focused Correct, sale yeah. versus just purely product. Well, and you you have to think of it that way yeah. because, you know, back in the old days when they were designing with metal halide, they were designing with, you know, failures built into that design. So everything yeah. was over designed to account for that. So now, you know, people wonder, you know, how can you get down that low in wattage, you know, from where we were? Well, it's because, you know, we can design because we know we're not going to have failures. This fixture is going to last and so you can you can just design to that sure. spec without having to build in redundancy. Yeah. So uh, controls. When will they be uh, ready for prime time on the LED side? I would say they're ready right now. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what what applications do you see where more than half of the jobs are you know controls enabled? You know, I think uh, controls are playing a bigger part in everything. Yeah. Um, you know, anything from the daylight harvesting sensors um, to you know even wireless. Sure. So that's kind of that's been something that I've been using a lot as wireless controls and, you know, places like schools where, you know, they don't necessarily want to rewire. And a lot of times it's sure. block foundations and it's really hard to get at, use the wireless controls in there. Um, you know, that way, instead of, you know, dimming or having to wire switches to do the dimming for like an overhead, you know, the teacher can configure her room however she wants and you can put that anywhere. You can have, you know, one switch dim any fixtures you want. So, you know, I think uh, that's been a big thing for them because, you know, the teacher then, if they want to change around the room, they don't have to rewire anything. They're not stuck with, you know, the overhead being right here. They can move it anywhere they want and just reconfigure that setup. Do you or Crescent, uh, do you guys see distribution kind of providing that uh, that controls geek squad that's, that's needed? I, that's one of the things I think has been lacking up until this point mm -hmm. is the controls technology is there, um, but in the customer's mind, I think if there's an issue with one particular job and they kind of maybe become gun shy to, mm -hmm. to, to do more, but who do you see in the marketplace as being that, uh, that local support for control systems? Is it the contractor? Is it the distributor? Is it you a know, mix of both? I would say it's a mix of both, okay. you know, distributor and, you know, maybe the agent that mm -hmm. they're, you know, buying the product through. Yep. Um, you know, I think both of those tend to tend to go towards that. Um, Agents, obviously, you know, they deal with that all day long. They have Absolutely. specialists that all they do is control. So um, if it's something I know really well, I'll help the customer with it. Um, if it's something that I'm not, you know, as sharp on, then yeah. I'll bring in that controls expert. Okay. So that makes that makes good sense. So anything else you want to want to go through? Um, you know, I'd like a, a tour of this beautiful place that yeah. you got here. So well, I think we can <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> that's probably the biggest thing. I haven't been here for a while. So, well, cool, man. I, I very much appreciate it. Thanks for braving the weather and, yeah. and getting up here and, uh, we'll definitely have you back. Yeah. All I right, appreciate man. it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah.